All right, so we're going to work through um, a calculation about A transpose A, and it's to do with this projection uh, matrix, which we've built in a previous video for any subspace. All right, here's the game. Any subspace S, uh, we've got some vector B, and we're in Rm for Mercury, and we're going to find the part of B that lives in P. So this is this is easy once we've, we we know the normal equation, um, and that was the we basically derive it again. Uh, if we we if we have a basis for the subspace of S, then we're off, right? So we make we line up the the um, basis vectors and we create this matrix A. In this case, it's an M by R. Right? This is an R-dimensional subspace, and um, we can solve that problem. Okay, so it's a basis, so these guys are linearly independent, and that leads us to some uh, grooviness. So first of all, what we want to understand is whether, why can we, that this, so the objective of this page is to explain why we can always take this inverse. And you don't want to take inverses for large matrices, but if you, you know, this is a 2 by 2 or 3 by 3 this is fine. Um, okay, so why can we do this? How are we assured we can do this? And it turns out that starting with a basis is is fine, and more generally, as long as A's columns are linearly independent, we can compute this inverse. So here's a little warning to start with. A transpose A, it looks like you might be able to do this, right? You could put the A here with an inverse, um, and A transpose over here with an inverse, right? So B, C inverse is C inverse, B inverse. That's, you know, that might be tempting. But these can be rectangular, right? This is M by R, that's a bad plan. Um, these guys might not have, so this is just a bad idea. All right, so let's get that out of the way. So A is a bit different, usually it's M by N, but we're, we're, we've got an M by R here. And so we're thinking about A transpose A. A is M by R, A transpose is R by M, so it's an R by R. So um, it's always square, and here's our statement. So A transpose A, we can do this as long as A's columns, if and only if A's columns are linearly independent. And, um, <coughs> Let's look at this. So we have this um, this statement here. A's columns are linearly independent. That's encoded in our, that is our null space story. So the null space of A is zero, only zero. And the only solution to uh, this question of how do you combine the columns of A to get zero is to say, I want zero of this one, zero of this one, zero of this one, right? They're linearly independent, which, right. So we're gonna show that, um, so, so the game will be to show that um, A transpose A's, more generally, A transpose A's null space is the same as A's, right? So if the null space of A is zero, then that's going to be the same for A transpose A. So we have to do two things, right? We have to show that if X is in A's null space, it's in A transpose A's null space, and the other way around. So this way is easy, so let's do that first, and it should be kind of obvious, right? So X is in the null space of A, it means that A times X goes to zero, gets crunched. And so we can mathematically just build this. Here's AX equals zero, and then we'll pre-multiply by A transpose. We get zero, right? Because A transpose A, A transpose times zero is zero, so that's what's happened here. We're gonna regroup these. This is A transpose A times X, and again, equals zero. So this X that was in the null space of A is in the null space of A transpose A, right? A transpose A times X equals zero. So that's the definition of a, uh, a vector being in the null space of A transpose A. All right, so that's one way. So it should make sense as well, right? So if X gets crunched by A, it certainly gets crunched by any matrix that's made by A on the right-hand side and some other stuff. Um, <clears throat> it's not true if you put A over here though, right? So A has to hit X straight away. Now, if X is, this is a sneakier one, if X is part of the null space of A transpose A, and you may quite enjoy this, you should, uh, then, okay, so by definition, A transpose A times X equals zero. So the monks say, let's do something sneaky with this. Let's pre-multiply by a row vector by X transpose. All right, so X transpose, on the, so let's look at the right. This is an R by one vector. X transpose is in one by R, so you multiply, that's a dot product. Anything dot product with zero is zero, it's one by one. This is just the number zero. 
on the left, so that's important, the left hand side, X transpose. And the reason for doing this is you, you could, if you're looking at this, you think it's a bit unbalanced and you can maybe make some symmetry here. So X transpose A, let's group that together and then let AX be off by itself. So here's AX. And then we make the observation that this is, using the spectacular formula, right, that B, C transpose equals C transpose B transpose. Awesome. Um, so the X goes over here, the A goes over here, the transposes disappear, we've got a big transpose here. Now this is a vector transpose times itself, right? The product of a, a vector with itself. That is by definition the length of the vector squared. This is the Pythagoras story. So we've got the length of a vector squared equals zero. So it has zero length, and the only vector that has zero length is zero. So we've got to this result that we wanted, uh, that uh, x is in the null space of A. So x is in the null space of A transpose A, M argue, argue, monks guide you, and we end up with the, the null space of A containing x as well. So you can do the same sort of thing if you thought about A, A transpose. You could argue things, you have to line it up in a slightly different way. That might be an excellent home exercise. And so we know the null space of A equals zero, which is true if the columns are linearly independent, tells you the null space of A transpose A is zero, and it's a square matrix with no null space. It's got full rank, right? So the rank of this is R, rank equals R. It's always invertible. So that works if you start with a, um, a basis for a subspace or someone just hands you a matrix for which the columns are linearly independent, but it's not always true. All right.